Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So in the wake of the Black Lives Matter protests turned riots turned white trust fund babies LARPing at Civil War, the usual corporate culprits have of course jumped on the social justice bandwagon. We've had various confectionery products changing their names to be allegedly less offensive, companies emblazoning their businesses with Black Lives Matter paraphernalia, every second Hollywood celebrity, A-list or otherwise, pledging to take responsibility for how allegedly complicit they are in racism, and most disturbingly, a number of television series, episodes, and a movie either taken down from streaming services or altered for depicting what the cool kids are calling outdated racial stereotypes and or white actors painting their faces a darker colour in order to play characters of other races. As if any of that is going to do anything other than irritate people rather than meaningfully address racism, but you know, whatever. Anyway, the big casualties in this entertainment cull were iconic British comedy series Little Britain and its sister show Come Fly With Me, created and performed by Matt Lucas and David Walliams. These were taken down from Netflix and other streaming services. Their crime? Lucas and Williams dressing up as characters of other races and also other satirical depictions of cultural stereotypes that some people somewhere may possibly have had their feelings hurt by. Classic film Gone with the Wind was next, temporarily removed from HBO Max and later reinstated with a disclaimer warning the viewer about the apparently terribly racist content they were about to consume. And while there were a few other shows that made the first round of bumps, such as Chris Lilly's comedy series Summer Heights High, Faulty Towers and The Mighty Boosh, it was Little Britain and Gone with the Wind that got the most attention for obvious reasons. However. No sooner had this purge been announced on June 9th when something interesting happened. But before I tell you what that is, this video is sponsored by Slug.com. But when I say sponsored by, I mean I have to use that terminology because YouTube will get me into trouble if I don't. Really, what I am saying is that I am on a new pro-free speech platform called Slug. I would love for you all to join me there and to become a member of my group. It is a discussion platform, it is super straightforward, there's great chat to be had, and some very cool content creators are on there as well all the people that you know and love. I will not only be posting my videos there, but also all of my segments from Sky News that you foreigners miss out on because Sky News Australia doesn't broadcast overseas. And of course, they are quite hard to find on the Sky News YouTube channel. Now, I have put a link to Slug in the video description and also in the pinned comment. Please give it a click, sign up, and join my group on Slug. It is super important to support these platforms outside of big tech, especially at the moment. It is is the only way to beat the censor, so I really hope to see you all on Slug. Anyway, after they were removed from streaming services, DVD sales for Little Britain, Come Fly With Me and Gone With The Wind went through the roof. And by through the roof, I mean that season one of Little Britain's DVD sales on Amazon went up 125,460%. Season 2 sales shot up 122,928% and Season 3 went up 98,513%. Whoa! Similar happened with Gone with the Wind on Amazon. A day after HBO Max pulled it temporarily from its service, the DVD raced to the top of the Amazon bestseller list for TV and movie DVD sales. It also shot up to number 5 on Apple iTunes Music Chart. Now none of this is surprising, I mean the surest way to get people interested in something is to perceivably ban it. Everything from TV shows to political commentators, if you restrict people's access to them, it immediately creates intrigue and therefore demand. It's the plight of the human condition. We always want what we can't have. However, this isn't a video about the ideological implications of removing classic TV shows in case they offend people. I made that video a couple of weeks ago. This is about what happened after Little Britain and Gone with the Wind's removal and subsequent DVD sales triumph. See, it wasn't long before other TV shows were identified as having potentially problematic scenes in them that regressive leftist activist thugs would inevitably lobby to ban. Power hungry little cretins that they are. Now by problematic I don't mean there is actually a problem with them. I mean when you consider, you know, context, intent and of course the time period in which these shows were created, 
there is no problem whatsoever, especially as a lot of the time these shows are actually critiquing prejudice by using things like blacking up white actors' faces in an ironic sense. However, given the reductive nature and low IQ of the current crop of SJW party poopers, they don't understand context, intent, or irony. For them, everything is taken at face value, a reductive way to look at the world, but they are a reductive group of people, so, you know, what do you expect? But here's the thing. The people involved in this next round of series and scene calls aren't actually the activists. They are creators, producers, and writers of various comedy shows from the early 2000s who have self-identified particular scenes from over a decade ago that they consider worthy of removal. Not activists, not TV networks, the creators themselves. Which is a little weird, at least at face value. The creator who drew my attention to this was the incomparable Tina Fey, who created smash hit comedy series 30 Rock. On June 22nd, she requested that four episodes of 30 Rock be removed from streaming services and reruns for allegedly offensive content. As she stated to Deadline, As we strive to do the work and do better in regards to race in America, we believe that these episodes featuring actors in race-changing makeup are best taken out of circulation. I understand now that intent is not a free pass for white people to use these images. I apologize for pain they have caused. Going forward, no comedy-loving kid needs to stumble on these tropes and be stung by their ugliness. I thank NBC Universal for honoring this request. Now, I am a huge Tina Fey fan. Her latest show, The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, is one of the best things I have ever seen. I have watched all four seasons like five times, and I will eventually watch them all again. It is an amazing show. And what I love about Tina Fey's comedy is that, despite the fact she is a massive lefty, she's generally pretty fair. She doesn't often bring politics into her comedy, and if she does, she kind of makes fun of everyone, including the Democrats. Maybe you two should keep moving on down the road. <sighs> No wonder Hillary didn't even bother coming to towns like this. Which is why I was so surprised that Tina Fey seemed to have taken a knee. She may be a Democrat, but she's never kind of struck me as massively woke, even recently. I mean, you saw that black gay stereotype named Titus Andromedon, who also just happens to be my absolute favorite character in that clip that I just showed you from Kimmy Schmidt. And since I love him so much, here is another. I know small town gay Kimmy. Brandon has a tan line where he usually wears a leather cuff. He's from Indiana, but he weighs less than 200 pounds. And there's a stain on his jeans that could only be from revarnishing an Edwardian escritoire. What? It's gay for desk. That show is a recent incarnation. It was only produced in the last five years and just had an interactive movie released on Netflix in 2020 at the height of cancel culture. There is nothing fancy pantsy about Tina Fey. She makes whatever joke she wants, which is why her reaction to 30 Rock was just so odd, so out of character. I mean, all the same jokes that humorless activists find offensive in 30 Rock are all in Kimmy Schmidt too. They're just less explicit. So why the change of heart? Well, at first I thought maybe she was worried that violent left-wing thugs that have been terrorizing America for the past month would burn her house down unless she got in first. Then I thought that maybe she kind of wanted to direct their attention away from the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, since it is her latest project and most likely what is making her the most money at the moment. But knowing Tina Fey, I mean, that still didn't seem reason enough. I mean, given the level of security that she can afford, it is unlikely that she is in danger of physical harm, and if they're going to come for Kimmy Schmidt, well, they're going to come for Kimmy Schmidt. You can't stop them. And then, it hit me. It was as if a giant light bulb had gone off in my head, as if a veil had been lifted and I could finally see the world clearly. I suddenly thought back to what had happened when Little Britain was taken off streaming services. DVD sales for the three seasons combined went up over 300,000%. I remembered what had happened with Gone with the Wind, the DVD sales, as well as all the publicity that was drummed up along with it. And all of a sudden, I knew what had happened. I knew why Tina Fey had done what she'd done. She wants us to buy the 30 Rock DVDs! It's so simple. That's it. That's the reason. I don't know why I hadn't realized it earlier, but it is the simplest, most justifiable explanation for the whole thing. And it's not just Tina Fey and 30 Rock either. I mean, look back at the Little Britain scenario. While Matt Lucas and David Williams have 
apologized over the years for some of the humor that they used in the show, they didn't completely stop using it. In fact, they brought back the I'm a Lady sketch just a couple of months ago in April for BBC's charity event Big Night In, which features unconvincing transvestites Emily and Florence. <coughs> <laughs> first things first, I am a lady. And I would like a lady swim, please. Now, while they only gave this skit a few seconds of airtime in Big Night In using wigs made out of toilet paper rolls in the context of saying they shouldn't be doing this sketch anymore, they still played the characters. Even though the trans lobby has repeatedly insisted that it is transphobic. If Matt Lucas and David Williams were truly, truly on the woke train, they wouldn't have even mentioned Emily and Florence. Remember, the work crowd doesn't believe in context or intent, so even using the skit as a mea culpa would still be considered unacceptable. Indeed, Pink News did an entire hit piece about it, outraged, regardless of the very obvious context. So. It should come as no surprise that after DVD sales went through the roof upon the removal of Little Britain from streaming services, they didn't go quiet as a way of quelling the controversy. They actually leaned into it with this tweet from Matt Lucas on June 14th. David and I have both spoken publicly in recent years of our regret that we played characters of other races. Once again, we want to make it clear that it was wrong and we are very sorry. In other words, David and I once played characters of other races. Don't you want to have a look? So does my theory stand up? Has Tina Fey done this to get a potential boost in DVD sales? Well, if we are to believe a search result of Amazon Australia, every season of 30 Rock except season 5 plus the full 7 season box set is labelled as stock running low, more coming soon. Coincidence? Or something more sinister? And the thing is, Tina Fey isn't the only one doing this. Early 2000s sitcom Community had an episode pulled by Hulu and Netflix because of actors darkening their skin, which was supported in a statement by the show's producer, Sony Pictures Television. Sure enough, on Amazon Australia, DVD stocks are running low, just like 30 Rock. Other shows that have done the same, that is, pinpoint and pull episodes at the request of the writer or producer, rather than at the prerogative of the streaming network, are Scrubs and The Office. TV shows that nobody pays attention to anymore, but could sure use a little injection of publicity and intrigue, followed by a potential sales boom of old DVD stock that is just sitting there gathering dust. And sure, People can download pirate versions of these shows instead of spending money on DVDs, but like, let's be real, there really probably aren't enough people out there who actually know how to pirate videos to make a meaningful dent in any kind of sales revenue. It is probably a loss that the creators can wear. So, am I right? Is this all just a money-making scheme disguised as wokeness from the likes of Tina Fey? Look, I have no idea. I mean, I could be completely wrong. I mean, in all of Hollywood, surely there must be one or two people left who have some sort of integrity or principles. <laughs> And who knows, maybe DVD stock of 30 Rock and Scrubs was low anyway. I didn't see the sales before all of this happened because, like everyone else, I now stream everything. But if I'm right, if this is just a plug to sell DVDs, then holy wow, have I ever had a monumental epiphany. So to Tina Fey, Matt Lucas, David Williams and all the rest, congratulations on making cancel culture work for you. In the name of cold hard capitalism, I salute you. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my Subscribestar link and other ways you can support me.